Hello, my name's Hans and today at Rumor Brothers we're going to be showing you how to change the cylinder head gasket on a Triumph Stag engine. As you can see we're showing you this out of the vehicle on an engine stand and this engine we'll be able to see a lot easier doing the job. The exhaust manifold has been removed and to drain the coolant if you need there is a drain plug situated just in there where you can drain the coolant to stop any mess when you come to take the head off. Okay, so firstly we remove the top camshaft cover. I've removed the bolts and that will lift out the way and show you the timing chain. And we first of all, before we undo anything, we need to time up the pulley and the camshaft with some locating marks. Before we start, we need to get the crankshaft at top dead centre. And using a 11 16 socket, I'm rotating the engine until the timing mark on the pulley will line up. Oh, here we go, it's just coming up. And it's lined up with a zero. Now we check the camshaft to see if that's lined up. Okay, now we have the engine at top dead centre, we need to check the camshaft lining marks. Here is the mark on the top of the cap, and there should be a mark on the camshaft. Looking there isn't one, so it must be 180 degrees out, so we shall need to rotate the engine another turn. Hopefully the timing mark will line up. Should be coming up now. And there it is, there's the mark. What I shall do to make life easier, I'll use some white pen to mark them so we can see them more clearly. To make the timing marks clearer to see, I've used one of these micro correct pens. As you can see, you just very easily put a mark on like so. We need to remove this little blanking plug and then we can knock the tab washers back with a punch so they can undo the two little bolts. Once we've, we can't get to the bottom one, but if we loosen this one first and then rotate the engine, we can undo the one at the bottom. So we'll uh, do those. I've rotated the engine clockwise so we can get to the lower bolt. I've uh, knocked back the tab washer so we can actually loosen the screw. Be very careful on taking it out because if we drop it down the bottom it will be uh, quite uh, annoying. Carefully lift it out of the way. Before we undo the final bolt holding the sprocket onto the camshaft we need to support the camshaft and chain onto this bracket to stop the tensioner taking up the slack in the chain and f causing problems trying to refit it back on later. So we use a pry bar and I'm just going to, this is a nut I'm using off one of the camshaft caps and very carefully screw it onto the end. Then we tighten that up with a spanner and remove the final bolt. If you find when removing the final bolt that it feels very tight, it means that the camshaft is putting pressure on the sides of the bolt. So using a spanner on a hexagon bit at the rear of the camshaft, we can just move it slightly so that we can undo it with our fingers. Otherwise it damages the threads of the bolt. Be very careful not to drop this one as well. And remove the tab washer and bolt. Now the camshaft top sprocket and chain is supported by a bracket connected to the engine block, we can withdraw it off the end of the camshaft. It is important to undo the cylinder head bolts in the correct order. We do this in reverse sequence to the way we tighten them up, which is starting on the bottom row, doing this one, that one, that one, and finally the middle one. And then the top row, we undo the end one, that end one, that one, that one, and that one. Finally, remove these two bolts, and these are quite special. They're a 7 16 spanner, but the thread is 5 16 and 
if you lose them they will be very awkward because of the confined access to fit anything else in there but after these two are removed we can then try to get the head off just removing the final bolts these have come off quite easily and I'm using a little magnetic one to pick up the uh, washers now the hard bit assuming this bit's gone right so far is to remove these studs we have a special tool that screws onto the threaded bit and hopefully we'll be able to unscrew them out to remove the studs we've got a special extractor tool that this first half screws onto the stud and that bit screws down the middle and then we tighten the two against each other and it grips on the top of the stud hopefully this will provide enough grip to unscrew the stud okay fitting the first part we screw that down the thread of the stud as far down as we can go and then insert the second half a bit like tightening up two nuts against each other make sure there's a bit of a gap between the head and then we tighten the two together now we've attached the special tool using a spanner on the lower part not the top bit we can attempt to unscrew the the stud and as you can see this one's coming out very easily and hopefully it should withdraw like that it doesn't matter which order you take the studs out and when they all come out more than likely that the head will still be stuck to the block with a head gasket however you might have trouble getting some of the studs out and you'll find that there may be one that won't come out if you do find one using penetrating oil letting it soak down it uh, whatever you don't do is try using a pry bar under here to actually pry off the head also if you do manage to get some movement between the head and the block using hardwood wedges can sometimes help but I'll no use, never use a cold chisel or anything metal that will damage the cylinder head face um, it may be possible to move it up slightly and then move it down and keep working at it but basically corrosion between the stud and the aluminium hull is what holds it down the best option is to try and turn it and unscrew it and break the actual corrosion that's holding it all together but once all the five studs are out you'll be able to lift the head straight off now all the bolts are removed we can lift the head off assuming we've broken the seal on the cylinder head gasket and this one should lift straight off like so as you can see this head has come off quite easily and this is an old gasket uh, but obviously in every other case you'll have to clean all the head gasket face with scrapers and to make it all nice and clean like you can see in the picture once we've scraped all the gasket material off and before doing that I've also put some paper down the bores to catch any bits down there because you don't want anything getting trapped between the piston and the bore so carefully keeping it we use some scotch brite and as you can see it does bring it up very well important to get all the traces of gasket off and make sure there's no scores or corrosion especially on the cylinder head do the same with the cylinder head and we'll be ready to fit a new gasket before fitting the new gasket now we've cleaned it all up and I use some panel wipe or some thinners to carefully degrease all the surface we don't want any oil or grease on there interfering with the seal on the new head gasket as you can see trying to hold the head gasket in position while we fit the new head will be quite tricky so I've used some old cylinder head studs cut them off cut a V in them and I'm going to insert these in these two holes to actually locate the head gasket and help locate the head while fitting and they can be removed afterwards now we're ready to fit the cylinder head we can carefully offer it up over the camshaft chain and check to line up with the two dowels that we fitted earlier lower it down carefully 
and then we can insert the long top studs. Might have to just jiggle it around a little bit. I would probably lubricate them slightly just to help them go in. Just lift it up just to make sure they all fit in snugly. And these can actually be screwed down just with a screwdriver. You don't need the special tool to wind them in. So the new ones will go in considerably easier than the old ones. Don't need to be screwed in too tight, but just till the bottom out and once all these five top are in we can remove the two dummy studs and then fit the lower bolts. Now we've got all the top row of studs in and the long bolt at the bottom, we can unscrew the, the dummy studs and then replace them with the short bolts. All we need to do is tighten them down, just knit them down so that they're not tight but ready for tightening up later. But before we tighten these up we need to put the two bolts in at the front. Now we've screwed in the cylinder head studs and bolts in finger tight, we need to insert these 5 16 bolts at the front. Might have to move the head up and down slightly just to make sure that they locate. But very important to fit these before tightening up the cylinder head. These can be fully tightened after the cylinder head's been tightened, but we just need to get them all the way down the threads and finger tight. Now we have all the cylinder head bolts in finger tight, we can tighten them up with a torque wrench. This is set to 55 pounds per foot and we start with the top centre one. The next one is this one. Tighten this one up until it clicks and then this one. We always do the top row first. And then the centre one on the bottom row. And then the same order as the top, but on the bottom. Finally, tighten up the two bolts at the end. Now the cylinder head has been bolted down, we need to reattach the sprocket onto the end of the camshaft. We need to make sure that the timing marks are still lined up on the camshaft and down here and look them through, seeing if the hole lines up with the threaded hole in the camshaft. If not, we can use a spanner just to move the camshaft slightly. But before we attach the bolts, we need to push this back into the camshaft. As you can see, there's a gap, and this is not actually fitted into the end of the camshaft. So we're going to just apply a bit of leverage and being, not using too much force, just jiggle it around until it slots in. And there you go, it's slotted into the slot and now we can line up the bolts and fit the locking tab washers and bolts. Now we've got a new tab washer and bolt, we can carefully fit it in and if it doesn't screw in, we can move the camshaft slightly until we feel it screw in nice and gently with the fingers. Once we're one bolt in, we can then rotate it to get to the one that's lower down. As you can see, we have one bolt in, but we have trouble getting to the lower one, so I'm going to rotate it using the crankshaft and not at that end to get to an easier position where I know I'm not going to 
drop it or lose it down the hole. If we find that this is difficult to locate, we can then just use a spanner. But as you can see, it's going in fine. We tighten those two up. And then have to bend the tab washers over. After tightening up the bolt, we then need to find one of the tab washers that lines up with a flat on the top of the nut. I've chosen this one at the top and I'm going to use a small cold chisel just to pry around the back and then knock it down. I shall use a flat chisel just to finish it off. After doing both bolts and locking the tab washers on each one. We can then remove this securing nut that we pinched from one of the bearing caps earlier. Be very careful, I like to lever the little bracket in and unscrew it because it tends to push the nut off and the last thing we want to do at this stage is lose the nut down the bottom. So very carefully withdraw the nut and I shall use the original washer and replace it back on the centre bearing cap. Remember to tighten it up. And then if this is stuck to the top, it should pry off and as long as it's moved out the way so it doesn't touch on the thread there, that'll be fine for the next time that we need to use it. Don't forget these rubber end caps they get very hard and brittle, so always replace them with a new one. You'll see why, because they, they just go rock hard and they would leak. So, fit one each each end, and then a rocker cover with a new gasket. I've siliconed just enough to hold it in position, and so it sticks into the cover. But I'll either put a thin layer of oil on here or leave it dry. Worst thing to do is put anything more on this side and then carefully lower it over. One last thing, always check that your timing marks always line up before you put it back together and then you know that everything will be fine. Replace the top screws and at the front and everything else fitted back just the way it came apart. To finish the job off we use some new screws and washers and new rubber seals and screws and we should gently tighten it down but not crush the gasket or bend the cover. It's better to tighten it up if it weeps a little bit than to over tighten it and cause it to bend. At Rumor Brothers, we're always interested to hear from our customers. So if there are any particular videos that you'd like us to produce, please contact us at the email address below.